From the beginning, man has possessed the attributes of the animal. Speed, power, dynamic movement, the instinct to exploit the weakness of his prey. And from his human inventiveness came weapons that could puncture and slash his enemy's flesh. In his struggle to survive, he developed tactics to heighten his advantage. created a knife culture, which has changed very little as it has cut its way through time. slashing and stabbing its enemies. The knife culture is still alive and deadly. What's happening, man? Now that's it. Uh, got the money, man? Let me see the shit, man. The shit's there, man. Where's the money? Five minutes. Five minutes, baby. No, oh, man, no money, no shit. Ah, oh, man, five minutes. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the scene. Air Force. While the knife culture continues to hone its skills, some officers still commit one tactical error after another by failing to assess the real dangers, by using ineffective and dangerous deployment, and by underestimating the degree of threat. 708 dispatch. Go ahead, 708. I need an ambulance and a backup. Yet 80% of you have removed edged weapons from suspects that could have been used against you. Make that 1017. 10 30% of you have already been threatened with edged weapons. And if an assault is attempted against you, there's a one in three chance that you will be wounded. Sergeant, take his gun belt off. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. You need right. to put an occlusive gun in. I need a blood pressure. All right. We'll breathe in here, buddy. We'll breathe in here. We'll breathe in here. We'll breathe in here. In the last 10 years, injuries to officers from edged weapons have increased 92%. Okay. We've got wet bristles on the left side. Two, three. Many officers dismiss the edged weapon as a mere relic from man's primitive roots. 
But this relic still has the intent and means to destroy the enemy. And today, in the eyes of the knife culture, the enemy can be you. Our goal is to help you avoid becoming an edged weapon statistic by teaching you how to make a proper threat assessment, how to select the proper force option for dealing with knives, and how to react with control. All words, eyes, no pulse. The first step is to become aware that edged weapon attacks often occur in unlikely situations, often when you're distracted or not expecting them at all. Police department! Storny? Jim Storny? Storny, I got a warrant for you. I know you're in there. Come on to the door. Open up. Ah! Where are you guys? What's going on? Oh, God, good guy. The use of the unexpected is a favorite tactic of edged weapon offenders. I told you three times to stop bothering the customer. This time you're going to jail. Why don't you leave me alone, man? Why don't you back off? No, man? this time you're going to jail. You're too close. Some survivors have found this out the hard way. The basic perception if you get into a knife attack is there's going to be one single thrust. You're going to cleanly and effectively block it, and that's going to be the end of it. You're going to apply a little bit of your academy taught self-defense. You're going to bend that knife out of his hand and arrest the bad guy, and that's the end. It doesn't work that way, sports fans. Things go from bad to horrible real quick. Right away, you're in deep shit. You're in bad shape. You're in a bad place. Faster than you ever perceive it happening to you. When I first saw that knife, it surprised the hell out of me, to be honest with you. Uh, for one thing, it wasn't your normal three-inch buck knife that usually most of your st street people carry or whatever. Uh, uh, it was subsequently learned that he was a butcher at a local slaughterhouse and... Uh, this is an implement he used to slaughter uh, beef with. It was about an eight-inch bony fillet knife. And it, it was bright out. It was 6.30 in the morning and during the summer. And, you know, there's just something that kind of uh, spooky about looking at an eight-inch knife with the sun gleaming off of it. In this case, at first, I never saw the knife. Uh, I backed up, and when the suspect came out, he lunged at me. I saw something, and I didn't know what it was, in his right hand. And I was about five feet away from him. Uh, and the next thing, we were on the ground. I was, I was back down. He was on top of me. Uh, I felt a couple of bows to my stomach area, mid-stomach area. And then from then, we just, you know, we kind of locked. And uh, it was then trying to take him into custody. And the whole time this was going on, he uh, kept stating that he was going to kill me. And I was, uh, I was unable to take him into custody. I only managed to get one handcuff on him. Uh, I said a little prayer in my mind uh, and started calling for another officer. Uh, when I went to the bottom of the stairs after entering the house, where I had noted that the door had been broken open, I approached the stairs and hollered up, 